welcome to another inspiring episode of the show, Are You Fulfilled? In this show, as we always say, this is a show that's designed with you in mind. And that's to take you from where you are to where you ought to be. And also to bring out that gift and that talent that's probably lying dormant in you. My name is Linda Amachreme. And today my guest is Ghana's leading motivational speaker, Mr. Emmanuel Day to me. We are taking a commercial break. We'll be right back. Wow, you've really got it. This furniture makes your new office look so elegant and conducive for business. Welcome to Quaker's Furniture, my choicest place to buy affordable and elegant looking home and office furniture. At Pogos Furniture, we have a variety of exquisite furniture designs. Get aesthetically designed kitchen cabinet, dining table, and living room furniture from Pogas. For a total bedroom makeover, dressing table, wardrobe, and different sizes of beds, Pogas is your number one. Pogas Furniture, your pattern of life. This is the leading hotel in Ghana. This hotel is unique. We are tradition with class and hospitality standard. We have the largest pool in the nation. We have about five restaurants. So when you come to La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, either you come in for business or you come in for leisure, this is the place to be in Ghana. Service, service delivery is a seed expectation of our guests. So this is the place to be in Ghana. When you come to Ghana, Accra, you must, it's a must uh, visit uh, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, the leading hotel in Ghana. Wow, you've really got it. This furniture makes your new office look so elegant and conducive for business. Welcome to Quaker's Furniture, my choicest place to buy affordable and elegant looking home and office furniture. At Pogos Furniture, we have a variety of exquisite furniture designs. Get aesthetically designed kitchen cabinet, dining table, and living room furniture from Pogas. For a total bedroom makeover, dressing table, wardrobe, and different sizes of beds, Pogas is your number one. Pogas Furniture, your pattern of life. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, the show again is Are You Fulfilled? And today my guest is Mr. Emmanuel Day to me. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you on the show. Same here. How did Mr. Emmanuel Day to me become who he is today? One of the things that I'm very grateful to the Lord for is the mother he allowed me to come into this world through. Uh, my mother made sure that she instilled in us, myself and my other siblings, values. Values that transcend what the normal Ghanaian would interpret as success. One of the key things that may not be important to other people, but my mother said to me was that he said, if you can smile at people, you can get anything you're looking for. And these are little little gems that have been part and parcel of me. That aside, the second most significant person in my life that has been of tremendous help and made such a great impact in bringing me to where I am today, as you may refer to, is my wife. Okay. Um, I met her when I was in senior high school, Form 2. She was then in Form 4. And my wife, at that time, who was just a friend, we were in the same singing group. I was a tenor singer, she was a treble singer. Um, did quite a lot on me, how to speak, how to talk, how to dress, and all that. I think that she's one single person that has played such a great a uh, significant role in shaping me and bringing me to where I am now. And then the last but not the least, which I, I would consider to be the most important thing, is God. At every point in time, God brought certain opportunities my way. They could be disasters, they could be challenges, they could be very, very distressful moments. But God made sure he taught me how to glean the little gems, the little opportunities, the little great ideas out of those opportunities and give me the, uh, the humility to be able to learn from those things uh, to be who I am today. So three key things. Number one is my mother. Okay. Number two is my wife. Number three is cool. God. To the openings, the opportunities, the challenges, the what I call the, the most distressful moments that God allowed me to go through. It's been a great experience. 
anytime I get up and there are challenges, there are what people will call problems that confront me, I am cool at it and I stay back and ask myself, Lord, what is it that you want me to learn out of this? Okay. And uh, it's been a great experience in my 48 years now. Wow, wonderful. Um, so um, you've mentioned your mother mm -hmm. and then your wife mm -hmm. and God. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that um, your wife must have come in at the latter part. Sure. So how did everything unfold? How did you know that this is your wife and so on? And also how did your career, what you're doing today, mm. how did it come in? Mm. I started off as a shoeshine boy. Because um, where, where I come from, I always say, Oyoko is, is, is not on the map of Ghana. Now I don't know it, whether it's not on the map of Ghana, but Oyoko is not on the map of Ghana. It's, it's, it's a typical village, but now due to technology and you know, development, you know, the, count, the town has improved a bit. But I came from that part of Ghana where you do pothole filling before you can get something to eat. Started off as a shoe shine boy, moved on from there to selling foodstuffs. Please, I'll buy plantain, put them in the train to attract to sell. On my way back, I'll buy trousers materials and sell. In the evening, I'll buy kerosene in, in gallons and pour them into bottles. And then I'll carry them from house to house and sell them. These were very challenging times, but trust me, the lessons I picked up from those experiences is not anything that you can buy, you can get from books. So how old were you then when you were selling? I was from quite young, but in the village, your age doesn't matter. It is how much you can grasp whatever the system is teaching you, whatever your parents are teaching you. And don't forget that in those days too, we had what we call the community science. Mm. You, you were a daughter or a son of this mother, but you're also a daughter or son of Everybody. the community. And so you pick up things from different people. And I remember very well when uh, adults would send you, go and buy me this. And I was very daring. I would, I was, I, I mean, I remember one day asking a certain old man, uncle, were you born with a walking stick? Why, why are you holding a walking stick? And occasionally you meet those who are quite open and they'll begin to tell you how, how they got happened. to where and why, why it happened in their life. So in a nutshell, I always say that I am a product of other people's wisdom. Okay. One of the key things my mother taught us is independence. Never ever fix your eyes on anybody because nobody can help you except yourself. Mm. So you, 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 you identify your potential, you identify your talent. Those are the kind of disciplines my mother taught us. And trust me, it's been of tremendous impact in my life. You have um, an organization that you run and mm. everybody knows you in your, uh, the fact that you're a motivational speaker and so on. So how did that one, where did you come in? Yes. You know, interestingly, I never, I never dreamt of becoming a motivational speaker. It just happened. And, uh, and I, I just started sharing my experience, sharing my life with people. You know where I'm coming from, mm. my background. And if you come from that background with a mother that has never been to school before, never dreamt that she would even have the money for her son, her son or her daughter to go to university. And by God's grace, I managed to go through all that to go to university. A level, I was the senior prefect of my school, Ufuri Penny. And I remember one day the headmaster calling me to his office and telling me, look, all your colleagues have registered except you. And even though you may be the school prefect, if you don't register, you cannot go to university. And I, I remember this, I mean, I remember very well. I stood there in, in, looking at the headmaster, Mr. Jima, and I said to myself, how could I have come all this way to this place? And just registration would prevent me from going to university. You know what I did? That same vacation, I went and stayed at Bunso. And over there, I was preparing banku and soup to sell. So I sold banku and soup on my head, prepared it myself. Sold it, made money, went back to school and registered. Passed the exam, came to University of Ghana and became the SRC president. Mm -hmm. All right. So after university, because at that time I was, I was married, because I, I got married going to the second year. Okay. When I became the SRC president, I got married. So after university, my wife and I went to London. And then uh, one day I lost my job. So I had to enroll as a cleaner. Okay. So you can imagine as as a president now doing cleaning. So I accepted that as a challenge. Remember I told you, every opportunity in my way, everything that happens to me, I ask the question, what can I learn out of it? Mm. So I, I, I came to the realization that perhaps my time in London was up. Mm. I didn't have money, but I told my wife, it was a Tuesday. Friday we are going back home. 
she was pregnant. We came here with, when we changed every money we had, it was 960,000. This was in 1993, 94 there. Okay, and the first chamber and hall self-contained we rented took almost 650 away, so we left with 300. That's how we began. But I started the foundation for Future Leaders International because I was pregnant with it. My pregnancy was as a result of the fact that I wanted to help young people on the streets. Okay? So I didn't start off as a motivational speaker. Okay. I started off wanting to help young people, teaching young people that, hey, you can make it no matter what. Now, as I kept on sharing my experience and sharing my principles in life and all that, my first public speaking, I used to go to the bush and talk to the trees. Okay, as a practice. As a practice. My first audience was my wife. From the bush, I came home and I spoke to my wife. And I'll write my script and my wife will pick it up and do the corrections here and there, here and there, here and there. And then I started getting an invitation. The first public appearance that I did was at Winneba. Uh, at that time, it was Winneba School of Music or something like that. Now it's a university, uh, university college. So that is how I started. I did not start off wanting to be a motivational speaker. But then when I realized that, oh, people want to hear my story, mm -hmm. then the question I asked myself, how can I make some income out of it? So I started thinking about what can I say for people to hear for them to pay me. And that's how I started. But um, prior to this, what did you used to do? Because you've mentioned a bit of it as in you trying to get invitation. How do people get you to come and speak to them? You know, I have a company that does training. We call it Human Capital. And it's to do corporate training. Most of the banks in Ghana have trained their staff. So, you know, well, I have a principle that whatever I do, I want to do it quality. It has to come with quality. I wrote a book titled, Excellence is a Choice. Okay. So. You, you, need to, you need to set yourself certain basic standards below which you will never allow anything to happen, okay? And once you do that, you put the customer at the helm of your planning and you say to yourself, I'm going to do this to make sure the customer is excited and satisfied. Once you do that, I'll tell you this, customers would propagate your name all around. Okay. Well, we're taking a commercial break. When we come back, we'll get to the expression part of the segment. Wow, you really got it. This furniture makes your new office look so elegant and conducive for business. Welcome to Quaker's Furniture, my choicest place to buy affordable and elegant looking home and office furniture. At Quaker's Furniture, we have a variety of exquisite furniture designs. Get aesthetically designed kitchen cabinet, dining table and living room furniture from Quaker's. For a total bedroom makeover, dressing table, wardrobe and different sizes of beds. Pogas is your number one. Pogas Furniture, your pattern of life. This is the leading hotel in Ghana. This hotel is unique. We are tradition with class and hospitality standard. We have the largest pool in the nation. We have about five restaurants. So when you come to La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, either you come in for business or you come in for leisure, this is the place to be in Ghana. Service, service delivery is a seed expectation of our guests. So this is the place to be in Ghana. When you come to Ghana, Accra, you must, it's a must uh, visit uh, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, the leading hotel in Ghana. Wow, you really got it. This furniture makes your new office look so elegant and conducive for business. Welcome to Quaker's Furniture, my choicest place to buy affordable and elegant looking home and office furniture. At Quaker's Furniture, we have a variety of exquisite furniture designs. Get aesthetically designed kitchen cabinet, dining table and living room furniture from Quaker's. For a total bedroom makeover, dressing table, wardrobe and different sizes of beds. Bogus is your number one. Bogus furniture, your pattern of life.